Whoa. What's your name? Star. Where are you headed? Santa Carla Boardwalk. That sounds good. But we gotta drive through Springfield first. What do you mean? Well, that's just what it's like being a cab driver in Springfield, as you'll see with my latest review of The Simpsons Road Rage for the GameCube. The story of this game is simple. Mr. Burns has bought out the Springfield transit system and has filled it with nuclear-powered buses that Lisa fears will poison the town residents. So Homer comes up with the idea to buy back the transit system using money made from starting a community cab service, and that's where you come in. Playing as the Simpsons family and many other unlockable characters, you have to drive around different neighborhoods of Springfield, picking up and dropping off passengers as fast and as recklessly as you can. To some old-school Sega fans, this may look and sound familiar, and it should. Around the time of this game's release, Sega noticed that this game was all too similar to their own vehicular combat game Crazy Taxi, so they filed a lawsuit of copyright infringement against EA and Radical Entertainment, which was later settled out of court for a still undisclosed amount of money. Thanks to that settlement, Simpsons fans still got to play this insane game, despite it still being an obvious imitation. Visually Road Rage is at best, average. Since I'm playing this after playing the Superior Simpsons game Hit and Run, it's hard not to notice the pretty flat graphics, even with this cartoon art style, but the graphics do enough for the game to be perfectly playable, except in this instance. For some reason, invisible walls will randomly block you when you're driving to a destination. It seems like the game thinks you're hitting a nearby obstacle even though you actually aren't. Now, this doesn't happen often enough for it to be a game breaker, but I still noticed it sometimes, and it was a rather annoying glitch. Otherwise, Road Rage does use good, though cartoony, physics, which is important for a game like this. As with many Simpsons games, the gameplay sound effects and music aren't very memorable, but they're very fitting for the game. The music gets you energized for speed, the crash sounds are hard-hitting, but the best part, of course, is the voice acting. The actual Simpsons cast are here with some great lines for driving, telling you where to go, and reacting to the many crashes you'll no doubt have. Honestly, sometimes I looked for specific characters to pick up to see what they would say about a destination in a particular neighborhood. For example, Krusty the Clown may have to hand out squirting diplomas downtown, or the entertainment district, he may simply want to drink himself into oblivion after a long day of performing for obnoxious kids. The one thing that can get annoying, though, is the characters criticizing your driving. Now, it's hilarious to hear them react to you plowing through fences or driving off the dam, but it's not so funny when they tell you you're driving too slow within a couple seconds of being picked up. Sit back and enjoy the ride! Does this wreck go any faster? Chill out, big one. This game is really about racing against the clock. After choosing one of 17 drivers, then one of 6 neighborhoods, you're given less than a minute and a half to pick up characters and drive them to their destinations. Now, this sounds like a short amount of time to rack up a lot of money, but this game rewards you for your skill to driving with more cash and more time. The faster you drop off your passenger, the more time is added, and some passengers will offer bonus time and money for you actually avoiding traffic or hitting everything in sight. Guess as to which one is the most fun bonus. Yes! Time for some road rage. Oh, bitch, get out the way. Get out the way, bitch, get out the way. I'm just doing my job. But seriously, that's a big part of the fun of this game. Driving recklessly, smashing through fences, bus stops, and people, leaving piles of destruction in your wake, all to get people from place to place. And part of the motivation to do that is the difficulty curve. The more passengers you drop off, the less time you get for each passenger later, which results in plenty of passengers ditching you, meaning you get money, but no time back. So if you want to keep the game going and get those high earnings, you'll have to master shortcuts, the game's deceptively deep controls, and a disregard for real-world traffic laws. It also helps to bear in mind the strengths and weaknesses of each car. For example, big cars like Otto's Bus or the Plow King are great for ramming cars out of your way and smashing things for road rage bonuses, while smaller cars like Bart's Honor Roller or Professor Frank's Hover Car are better for speed and quick turns. It's fun to play with a different character each time to hear their dialogue, but strategists can discover the car that works best for them and use it to reach those high scores. Now, part of the incentive to keep playing aside from getting high scores is to unlock all the characters and neighborhoods from earning enough money, and they're spread out in such a way to make your journey to the Golden Million worthwhile. Although, one thing I felt like the game could have done better was having more characters. The ones featured here are funny, but you do start to wish this game let you drive around Dr. Hibbert, Skinner's mom, Lenny and Carl, Selma and Patty, Duffman, Kent Brockman, I could go on. Just more characters in this game would have added more variety and laughs. Totally awesome! That was the greatest ride in history! Additionally, there's a Sunday drive mode to practice each neighborhood without a timer, and a mission mode. The missions are pretty short and... 
recycled. Aside from maybe one mission, these missions are about hitting objects placed throughout an area before time runs out. They're fun to play once so you unlock the car built for Homer, otherwise there's not much incentive to replay them. But one more mode is a two-player head-to-head mode where both players drive through a neighborhood transporting one customer at a time. So the two players have to hit and then race each other to see who can drop off the most passengers. It is a fun mode that gets competitive fast, but like the main game, you and your friend will either become addicted, or you'll only want to play this mode in short bursts on occasion before it stops being fun. Let me make a recommendation to EA. Assuming the Nintendo Switch does get GameCube Virtual Console games, re-releasing this on the Switch Virtual Console would be a great idea. It's simple, fast-paced, pick-up-and-play fun makes it ideal for a handheld console hybrid. Road Rage may be a blatant rip-off of another game, and some would argue that's standard practice for this satirical series anyway, but this is a fun pick-up-and-play game for Simpsons fans. With its level of fun and quality, I would say $15 is the most you want to spend on buying this game now. $10 is the best price. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed this review. I'm off to make some more money. You know what, I'll just fly there. <laughs> to the beach! Well, that's my review of The Simpsons Road Rage for the GameCube. If you liked this review, check out my previous reviews of these other licensed GameCube games, The Simpsons Hit and Run, and Buffy the Vampire Slayer Chaos Bleeds. See you all next time. Get out of the car, man. I, uh, had no idea you could drive so fast.